I'll be using this football player cartoon to demonstrate my method of creating shading and shadows. Bear in mind, this method requires the use of digital software which supports layers. Think of layers as panes of glass that can be stacked. All layers will be visible, but the images on each pane can be colored and manipulated separately. We start by copying and pasting a duplicate football player image onto a second layer. I'll move the top layer off-center to the left for a moment just to demonstrate how this is happening, but then I have to realign them again so we can begin our work. Next I darken the top layer a few shades to represent color of shadows. I'll flicker these colors here to make it clear what I'm doing. There is no magic formula for choosing these shades. If the character is outdoors on a sunny day, the differential will be less than if the character is to be a sinister figure in a darkened room. Use your own good judgment and do what looks good for your purpose. Next, for the purpose of this video, I want to move the lighter image to the front with the darker image directly behind it. Choosing which layer goes on top depends on the desired results. More on that subject in a couple of minutes. Now let's assume the light source will be sunshine directly above the football player. Using our eraser function, we start erasing areas from the lighter colored image such that the darker image behind it shows through. I won't be extremely precise here, only enough to demonstrate how it looks in practice. And while I'm erasing the shadow areas, let me mention the reason why we might have wanted to leave the dark layer on top instead of moving it underneath. If the football player were to be illuminated from behind instead of from above, then the entire front of the player would be left dark with only lightened edges around the outside. It's much easier to remove small amounts of color from the edge than to remove large amounts of color from the center. Let's look again at each of our two layers. The lighter top layer has been removed in enough places to allow the darker image to show through where shadow is needed. The darker layer is still intact in the background, ready to show through in even more areas if we choose to erase more of the top layer. As we can see, the eraser has created smooth shadows without any need to draw separation lines. I would also like to add that digital image software usually contains a function called undo. If things like position of these shadows aren't looking as planned, we can use the undo function to remove one or more of them as I am doing here. And of course, if we change our minds about undoing a part of the image, or if we take away too much, we can just put it back with the function called redo. Well, that's pretty much how I do it. You might have already concluded that this method can be taken even higher, such as using three different color layers instead of two. But that's up to you. And it looks like our football player is getting really anxious to get back into the game. So we better stop here. This is Clarence. Thanks for stopping by.